Okay guys, let's go through this Polaroid uh, shake transition. Many of you have seen this on other videos on YouTube, so I'm going to show you how to do it in Resolve. First thing you want to do is bring in your clip that you're going to use with the Polaroid picture. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to take the video, make it easy on myself, and then I'm going to do go ahead and take the clips that I'm going to transition out of. All right, so I'm going to just take a portion of this one here and put one let's see right there all right now it looks like it's uh, not long enough but I'm gonna fix that here in a minute actually let me move these up real quick okay the next thing you want to do is if I look at my transition here for the Polaroid shake Notice it's kind of slow with the shake, so I'm going to speed that up with the speed ramp. But one thing I want to call out is this is really a match move from two clips to one clip. So we're going to have to track these two clips um, onto this one clip. Let's do the speed ramp real quick. Um, Retime control. So I want to do it as soon as I begin to shake right there. So I'm going to go ahead and add a speed point, and we'll continue until it's done right there. All right, and I'm going to change this to, let's just do 200. All right, I'm going to shorten this up. I think that's good. So, actually, before I sh shorten this, let me go ahead and mark out the point that I want to transition. Right there. Okay, so I'm going to end that here. And then we'll put that there. Now, a couple of things that you should note here. The uh, frame rate of this clip just happened to be, of the Polaroid, happens to be 30, and the frame rate of the other two clips is 24. My timeline is, is 24. Now, when you're tracking something, that's going to cause all kinds of issues when you try to co uh, copy the track data. So the best way to manage that is to create um, compound clips. Now, there's two reasons also why you want to create a compound clip outside of frame rate differences clip duration in this case you see I, I, I cropped the uh, clip but when you're tracking something it looks at the entire duration of the clip and so uh, you're gonna have issues with tracking uh, if the clip durations are different as well as um, a speed curve which our speed ramp which I, I just showed you I did okay so compound clips will actually fix all of that so I'm gonna make this one we're just gonna call it Polaroid and then we're gonna put these two together and call it Polaroid transition clips okay now we're gonna go into the uh, color section and get into the masking and tracking okay so let's go ahead and set up our mask and our tracking so we're gonna first go into power windows here and we're going to select the curve and we're going to draw an outline. So I'm going to zoom in here of the image right there, there, there. All right, I'm going to make it a little uniform. Give me a little, little room here so as it's moving around, we can uh, have a little flexibility. All right, got it there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and s invert this. And then you see the gray box, which uh, will allow the secondary clips to shine through. And I'm going to go ahead and set the softness for inside to 1.3. Switch that. Okay. And you can kind of see that it looks like it's, uh, it could be probably a little sharper, but I'm going to leave it there for now. It looks pretty good to me. Okay. All right. I'll turn that back off. Okay. So now what we want to do is track the motion as it's shaking. Uh, so this is a little tricky because we're kind of doing a match move here of two video clips with the one video clip. But of course, it's really one to one since we've got the compound clips. Um, but what we want to do is set up a point tracker. And we'll select our point. We're going to zoom in here and I'm going to drag this to the edge of the picture. Okay, so we're going to use that. When you're tracking something, you want something that's high contrast. So white versus the green background. 
uh, it needs to be in focus and visible throughout the shot. So that's something that I, I think works. Now, as we're shaking this, there is a little motion blur, as you can see. Uh, so that's what sometimes causes uh, problems with tracking, but we're hopefully not going to have that today. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and have this thing track forward, starting at the beginning of the clip. Okay, so it lost it. Not to worry. What we'll do is we'll go right before to the point right before it lost it, and we're going to just manually track this slowly, one frame at a time. See if it can maintain it. Okay, it did. We're not going to worry about the power window right now because uh, we're going to have to fix that later with a different, uh, uh, different uh, approach. All right, so when you do this slowly, it usually works pretty well, as you can see. All right, so we got through the transition. I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward it. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix the power window. We noticed that it got off uh, as we went through the transition in a few places. Okay, so we're going to have to set up a few keyframes, hopefully not so much, because uh, we did do a speed ramp, which minimizes the amount of keyframes you have to do during a uh, transition where it impacts the uh, or dis distorts the, uh, the image. So what we want to do before we do any keyframing is make sure your defaults are already set. So in this case for the power window, we did set our inversion. We did set our softness so that we have a a pretty nice uh, feathering effect and if you want to modify that let me just take a quick quick peek here uh, it looks okay for me if you want to modify that now's the time to do it before you go through with keyframes otherwise you'll have to redo it <laughs> each keyframe versus at the beginning okay so let's go ahead at the beginning and we will start our keyframing and go back here to tracking and select dynamic keyframing here and we're going to go ahead, fast forward through the timeline until we get to the point where we think we're missing. Okay, so I'm going to back up here a little bit. Right about there is our last position before we lose it. So I'm going to go ahead and just move it ever so slightly and put it back into place so it locks in a keyframe. And then I'm also going to lock in a keyframe after the transition. Let's see. It looks like it's got it pretty well here. We may have to clean that up just a tad. Uh, let's go right there. Okay, so we're also going to lock this in right there. I'm going to rotate it just so slightly. Okay. All right, so now I just have to fill in between. So I'm going to go back to my first keyframe and just advance it from there. So I'm going to right cursor. And then I'm just going to adjust it accordingly. So in most cases, I think I just need to rotate and move the position. Okay, so I got through all the keyframes. Uh, in my case, I had a lot because of the distortion effects. Um, but a tip is if you're able to avoid motion blur, maybe shooting at a higher frame rate or a higher shutter speed so you don't have as much motion blur and makes it easier uh, to track and you have less uh, keyframes. The other thing I could have done was sped it up a little bit. Um, so that I wouldn't have as many frames during the transition. So those are all tips. Um, so what we want to do now is copy this track data over to our secondary clip. So we're going to click here and do copy track data. Go to our secondary clip. We're going to select stabilizer. Then we're going to select classic stabilizer, which I already have selected. And then you're going to do paste track data. Okay. Now you notice that the track data looks very similar to, or looks exact to the, um, the primary clip. And that is because we use compound clips. If you had not used, if we had not used compound clips, 
and we had different frame rates or different speeds, the two curves would look different and you'd have problems tracking it. So because of that, uh, we don't have that problem. So let me go back to here under stabilizer. What we want to do now is select minus 100 and then we're going to stabilize it. Okay. So now if we go back to the main clip, we're going to see how this looks. We're going to go ahead and add alpha output. We're going to connect it and we're just going to uh, play this through. Looks good. Now don't worry about the, the, the image in here. We'll adjust that position here in a minute uh, so that it's centered uh, how we want it. But as far as the tracking, it looks very good. Okay. All right, so let's go to the Edit tab. Now, in order for us to get the image that we want centered in the clip, we're going to need to go inside of this compound clip. Now, the advantage of a compound clip, obviously, is we can adjust the position without it messing up our tracking. Um, so we're going to right-click on here and go into Open and Timeline. And so we've got our two images. All right, so I'm going to start here at the first image. We're going to go into the Inspector tab. And we're going to zoom out and then position it roughly where we think it should be. And I'm going to do the same for these, the other image here. I'm going to zoom out and position it roughly. And I'm not going to try to get this exact, but I think uh, you, you'll you get the point. So I've got it roughly where I think I want it to be centered. The other thing I want to do here while we're still on here is, you'll notice the background here is quite bright compared to um, our foreground so we're going to dial the I'm sorry we're going to dial the opacity down uh, just a bit so it looks a little more natural uh, and that one's pretty good already so I'm just going to leave it there but that's something you want to play around with the other thing is we want a, a slight cross dissolve as we're switching the images we're going to do the cross dissolve here and then we're also going to add a motion blur later uh, so that it really looks good. So we're just going to do a two keyframe. I think cross dissolve is fine. Okay. You may want to extend this to maybe three frames. Let's go three. Okay. All right. So that's it for this one. Back here on the main timeline, and we're going to take a look at this real quick. All right. That looks pretty good. The other thing is motion blur. Some people want to see a little motion blur as you're transitioning uh, between the clips. And I'm going to show you how to do that. If you've got Resolve Studio, you can just add it here. But if you don't, there's a little trick that I came up with that, that works pretty well. And that's called Prism Blur. So we're going to add a node to the secondary clip here. I'm going to drag on Prism Blur. What we're going to do is set up some static keyframes. So the first static keyframe we're going to set is, is to turn it, um, actually we're going to set the blur strength to zero. Okay, and what we're going to do next is go out right, right as we're about to have a little movement right there. We're going to set another static keyframe and we're going to right click here, add static keyframe. We're going to set it back to the default of 0.2, but we're also going to add X position like nine, minus 3.5 or so around there. That gives a pretty good effect. Uh, vignette, we don't need a vignette. You can see very quickly uh, that it gives a little, um, and I'm going to forward this through. You can see how it, it gives it a little uh, kind of a blur, motion blur uh, look to it. So that usually works pretty well. And I'm just going to go down here to the end. And then I'm going to add another static keyframe. And then just turn it off. Okay, so it's it's non-existent here. Just double check. Ah, it looks like it's still there. Let's just reset everything. Better yet, let's just turn it off there. Okay. Yeah, now we're there. And it's on right here. Yeah, okay. So that's it. If you've got any questions, uh, please leave a message below in the comments section. Otherwise, please like and subscribe. Peace.